Go to any park in Taipei and you'll likely find someone tossing bread to pigeons or squirrels. It may seem like a fun way to help animals survive in nature, but experts warn that human handouts lead to serious problems. Feeding drives overpopulation, which can throw the ecosystem off balance. Feeding can also make some animals more vulnerable to poaching. Tonight in our Sunday special report, we take a closer look at wildlife feeding and how it can bring about more harm than good. We followed National Taiwan University professor Yang Ping Shi into Taipei's Oasis of Calm, the 26 hectare Da'an Forest Park. The park opened in 1994. 27 years later, the park has found itself facing an unprecedented threat. The trunks of golden shower trees are covered in scars, and their crowns are thin and sparse. The bald cypresses nearby have also seen better days. We're shown a china berry tree that's oozing resin from where the bark was chipped off. And these are the culprits behind it all, squirrels. The squirrels at Da'an Forest Park are the fattest squirrels in Taiwan. There are 547 of them across just 26 hectares. Having just 100 or 200 of them across 26 hectares would already be a lot. As rodents, squirrels have to gnaw on things to wear down their teeth. But there are just too many squirrels in Da'an Forest Park. 2.5 times the population the park can handle. We leave the park and head to the outskirts of Taipei, where we find the same problem of animal overpopulation. Yang Minshan National Park Ranger Huang Hanlin shows us to areas overrun with monkeys. Over the past two to three years, macaques have made themselves at home in car parks, gazebos and roadsides. They navigate around cars and scooters apparently with no fear. Wild animals didn't used to be such a big part of Taipei's parks, either in Da'an or on Yangmingshan. But in recent years, despite the increasing presence of humans, wild animal populations have exploded. How did this come about? Watching monkeys and feeding them have become a popular activity among day trippers at Yangmingshan. You can often see banana peels and corn on the side of the road. Over here, there's a lot of scraps in one spot. It could be that someone chucked a bunch of bananas over and the monkeys split them among themselves. People often feed squirrels and bamboo partridges, which tend to spread out and about. But for macaques, the situation is more severe, as they congregate near roads. Feeding has caused macaque numbers to surge, sending their habitats swelling into human settlements and roads. Back at Da'an Forest Park, squirrel and pigeon numbers are also skyrocketing due to routine feeding. For humans, it can be hard not to want to offer them a snack. Humans are part of nature, so we really like being immersed in the great outdoors. It's an inherent desire. When you feed animals, you might find it very relaxing, and you feel like you're helping these wild animals. According to New Zealand environmentalist Mark Orams, interacting with animals makes people feel closer to nature. In one of his studies, Orams found that engaging with wildlife lifted people's spirits and improved their mood and sense of self-worth. At this tourist farm, feeding time is a big hit with kids and the young at heart. Through carers' instructions, the animals are given feed based on their needs, while visitors get a lesson in animal nutrition. It's very different from feeding animals in the wild, a practice that can wreak havoc on ecosystems. Some people bring their leftovers, like bones, to give to animals. Some bring leftover noodles or whatever and spill it all on the ground. 
At parks across Taiwan cities, it's now common to see people giving animals food with no regard to the dietary needs. People most often feed pigeons. They think it's fun to throw some feed on the ground to attract pigeons. Feeding wildlife is especially common in large urban parks, such as Rongxing Garden in Dahan Forest Park. A population explosion of one species inevitably has a knock-on effect on others in the ecosystem. For example, a big squirrel population doesn't just spoil the bark of trees, it can also pose a threat to local birds. That cavity is a Taiwan barbed nest. They are raising a chick. Farther down, there is a bigger hole with marks that were very likely made by a squirrel. Maybe the squirrel was bored or it was scavenging for food. A chick inside that nest can easily be pulled out by a squirrel. At night, leftover scraps intended for squirrels and birds become a feast for rats. The scraps are not just unsightly, they can also be a public health hazard. Squat down at the park and you'll immediately be surrounded by pigeons. Being in such close quarters with wild animals comes with health risks. Bird flu can spread like this. People could also pick up infectious diseases from squirrels and other animals. Orthohantavirus, Toxoplasma gondii and B virus can all be transmitted to humans from squirrels, birds and macaques. As you're approaching the animal and trying to feed it, you could get bitten and that wouldn't be good. While macaques can pose an even more direct threat to humans. At Yangmingshan, you can see groups of monkeys waiting for humans to bring food. Experts say it's a disaster waiting to happen. When monkeys lose their fear of humans, people can more easily hurt them or capture them. Bad things can happen. And when macaques see humans as a food source, they become aggressive and start attacking people to steal their food. At Kaohsiung Shoshan, macaques are known to break into people's homes to steal food. Feeding can impair the animal's foraging abilities and can even disrupt the natural balance of the wider ecosystem. For example, it can affect the reproduction of bishopwood trees. Normally, macaques eat the fruit of these trees and then disperse the seeds and their feces. But when macaques stop eating the fruit, fewer new saplings can grow, preventing the forest from regenerating itself. Both for animals and for the humans involved, feeding wildlife can be a lose-lose situation. What can the law do about it? According to one Taipei City Ordinance, feeders can be punished for littering, but issuing fines is tricky business. Firstly, we might not know who the offender is. If we need to obtain personal information, we need to get law enforcement involved. According to the Waste Disposal Act, fines can only be issued if they drop stuff on the ground and leave without cleaning up after themselves. Until recently, park volunteers and security guards could only go on patrol, asking people to stop feeding the wildlife. It was very difficult to issue a fine to truly hold feeders accountable. But on June 1, 2021, Taipei enacted an ordinance that explicitly prohibits the act of wildlife feeding, making it easier to issue fines of up to 6,000 NT. Over at Yangmingshan National Park, feeding animals is also prohibited by the national park law. Violators can be fined 3,000 NT. Park rangers also make it their mission to teach macaques to stay away from people. We now join rangers and volunteers on patrol at Yangmingshan National Park. They are armed with paintball guns to scare monkeys away from roads. Rangers say they need to keep changing the strategy as the monkeys can learn to recognize them. If you show the gun, they take flight and run away. They're much faster than us. They can tell us apart and recognize our uniforms. So we have vests in four or five different colors to switch them around. They can also recognize the noise cars and scooters make. 
to prevent traffic accidents involving the macaques, the squad members have to show up in different outfits and vehicles. They open fire to scare off the macaques so that they learn to stay away from roads and humans. Wild animals belong in nature. They live in their habitats and have their own ways of living. We shouldn't approach them, disturb them or feed them. Watching them from a distance is more than enough. Not intervening in their lives is the right approach to have when dealing with wildlife. For humans, it's only natural to want to care for other living beings, but keeping a respectful distance can be in the best interests of both people and the wildlife they feed.